In this video tutorial, I'll teach you how to create an infinite logo marquee scroll effect. So in this example website, pmreconference.com, you can see when we scroll down to the hero section, we have a 2023 partner section featuring a bunch of logos that rotate in a marquee-like fashion and it also rotates in an infinite scroll, in a perfect infinite scroll. So obviously I'm not going to make you guys sit here for two minutes or whatever it is before it ends the loop, but just keep in mind that's what's happening. Another example would be in the actual Webflow. Just going to refresh the page. You can see that Webflow even has this logo scroll effect. And lastly, we have blazetransit.com. We can also see that there's an infinite marquee scroll effect. So let's go ahead and do this in Webflow. Right now I just have a dummy project set up. I have a checkout eCorp sponsor section and I want the logo to essentially move right below here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into my design software. Right now I'm using Sketch. You could be using whatever you want, Canva, Photoshop, Figma, etc. And I just have the six logos that I want featured. Uh, we have the Nike, McDonald's and other popular logos. So there's two ways of I would recommend doing this. One is to make sure you crop out the icons exactly. So as you notice, if I select over the McDonald's logo or the Netflix logo, there is no additional space around this. And what I mean by this is, for example, if I actually put this McDonald's logo here, you can see with this specific logo, if I <coughs> put it to Marcus Export, you can see that there's a bit of white space on the left and the right, which will affect the implementation. So it's better if you just have everything cropped out to exactly the logo, or alternatively to just have like an artboard and just have the logo fitting inside that specific box. So there's two ways of doing it, but I'm just gonna upload it as it is with everything cropped. I'm gonna go back into Webflow, I'm gonna go into the media and I'm just gonna drag in these new logos. <coughs> and once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and add a section just below the, above the footer, so right here. And in this section, I'm gonna call it logo marquee section and I'm going to place a very faint gray color just so we can see what's going on and I'm going to go ahead and inside this I'm going to add a div block and in this div block I'm going to call it logo marquee move or wrapper and inside this we're going to add a grid and we're going to give it a class of logo marquee grid so once that's done, we can go ahead and edit the grid and I'm going to get rid of the rows. So I just want to have one row and because I have six logos, I'm going to go ahead and just add six columns like so. And I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of the columns. So I'm going to put zero columns and zero rows. Then with the logo marquee section, I'm going to go ahead and just add some padding to the top and bottom, maybe like 30 pixels. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and add an image inside the grid and I'm going to go ahead and give this a class of logo image and I'm going to go ahead and just add those images in so right now I'm just going to copy this six times and I'm going to go ahead and just add them in McDonald's Netflix uh, Apple Samsung and Nike <coughs> so once that's all added what I'm going to do with the grid selected, the logo marquee grid, I'm going to go ahead and just put the alignment in the middle so they're all aligned in the middle. And then with the actual image of the logo, I'm going to go ahead and set a max width. I'm going to put 180 pixels. Um, and I'm going to put a height of, let's just say, 48 pixels. Uh, maybe I'll change the width to 120. That looks good. And you'll notice that these images are appearing stretched, some of them specifically the Apple and the McDonald's in this case. And what we want to do is just change the fit from fill to contain. That way it's always contained to that specific dimension, 120 by 48. And once that's done, I'm going to go also go ahead and just put the alignment to the middle. So it's justified to the middle. And essentially that is our first layer. What I'm going to do in this case is just duplicate this grid. So there's another one below it because I want essentially this to scroll 
in a very nice way where it just seamlessly goes into the next section without you even noticing. So in order to do this, I'm gonna duplicate the grid, gonna head back to the logo marquee wrapper and apply flex. And that's it. So now going back to the grid, what I wanna do is I actually wanna make this grid a width of 100 viewport width. And I wanna add the min width also to be 100 viewport width. That way it's always gonna take 100% of the screen. And if I actually select the logo marquee wrapper, you can see what we're gonna be doing. So right here, if I just have margin hovered over and I just put negative margin, you can see what we're actually gonna do is we're just gonna move this, this div block left and right all the way to the end. And once it reaches the end, we're just gonna quickly a key. Once it goes here, we're gonna quickly just replace this with a zero. So then it goes perfectly back into position. So let's go ahead and apply this animation. Let's go ahead and go into interactions. We'll go page trigger. We'll go page load. So we want this to happen when the page is loaded. We'll click start animation. We'll click new animation. We'll give it a class of low key logo marquee. And then I'm just gonna put in brackets desktop. Hit enter. And then from here, we can go ahead and select our low key logo marquee wrapper. Hit plus, hit move. I'll go ahead and change this to class. And what we can do here is we can go ahead and change the duration to zero. And we can go ahead and put the move to zero viewport width or even zero percentage. So we'll put zero percent. And then we'll add an N1 with move and we'll change this to a hundred percent. One sec, maybe not hundred percent. We'll change it to negative a hundred percent. Sorry. So now if you actually play this, you can see that it's actually moving, but it's moving very, very fast. So we'll give it an appropriate duration of, I'm just gonna put it seven seconds just to test it out. I'm gonna hit save. And then right here, I'm gonna tick this loop. So it just keeps looping that animation. Now if I hit preview, you can see it's gonna be moving, moving, moving. And then once it reaches near the end, right here, it's gonna restart. And you can see you didn't even notice the change. So let's just recap what happened. Right here, it's placed at 0%, and then it's gonna be moving from 0% to negative 100, and it's gonna take seven seconds for that to happen. And as soon as that ends, it's gonna automatically move it back to the default position, which is 0%, and that's how we create that seamless loop. So with this second one selected, I'm now gonna change the duration to something longer, maybe 32 seconds, hit save, and now if I hit preview, it's much more smooth, the animation. So feel free to play around with the timing, but essentially, if we actually look at it on desktop, it is all done. But we also want to make this mobile responsive. So let's go ahead and go to tablet. And in tablet, it's looking okay. So right now it's not that cramped. We can obviously go in and we can actually just change the width to maybe from 120 pixels to 88. And we can change the height from 48 to 42. And you can see everything is, is good in tablet. So you can see it's still working. It's all responsive like so. But once we get into mobile landscape, it might be a bit too tight, the logos. So what we can do instead is we can go ahead and click the logo marquee grid and we can change it from min width, 100 viewport width to maybe 150. That way it's taking up 50% more of the screen. But this also means we have to go back into the interaction of the page load and where we have desktop, we decided that this looks fine on desktop and tablet, but for mobile, we have to change up the, the points of the animation. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and just duplicate this and we'll click into it. <coughs> Here, we'll just rename it to mobile. And you'll notice that right now it's still stuck at 0%, but now in the second indication, it's at negative 100% when really it should be now negative 150 if my math is correct so essentially what we did with that viewport width we moved it from 100 to 150 so we have to cater for an additional 50 percent so that's why we moved it from 100 to 150 and as you can see if i click onto these two buttons it's now still looping endlessly and finally if we go back to mobile we can see that it's all working pretty well maybe we want to change the sizing from 88 pixels to 72 and we want to change the height from 42 to 32. Uh, maybe we can even reduce the width a bit more to maybe 64. 
and you can see if I preview it, everything is working. We just want to make sure one more thing. We head to the body and we want to make sure that we add both of this in. So right now with the mobile, we just want to make sure this is selected in mobile. Close this and make a new page load trigger and tick this into the desktop that we made and just untick, untick it for mobile. So essentially we have two animations. One is for desktop and tablet. The bottom one is for mobile. We want to make sure that the desktop is only applying for desktop and tablet in this case. And we want to make a separate animation right here for the mobile. And this one only has mobile landscape and mobile portrait ticked. So you don't want these to overlap, otherwise there'll be a lot of issues. But now if I preview the page, you can see that it's moving across and it is endless looping. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Really have a play around with it rather than just taking my numbers like 100% and 150. Just really understand the main principle of what we're trying to achieve here and how it works. Uh, but once that's done, you just want to do one more thing. With this logo marquee section, we want to go ahead and change the width to 100% and want to put overflow to none. That way, there won't be this horizontal scroll bar in desktop. Again, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you really learned the premise of how this works. And I can't wait to see what you guys create. See you in the next tutorial. Peace.